Hi, this is Petey from Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com. In today's tutorial, I wanted to go over the planning of our game. Now, we're going to make a fairly simple collectible card game. It's basically just going to have all the, the general aspects of pretty much every collectible card game out there already. And to that effect, I wanted to just break it up into small sections that we'll probably cover one at a time in a tutorial. Not necessarily in this order, but just a quick you know, rundown of what exactly we need to implement. So one of the first things we have to look at are, are card types. And what type of cards are we going to have for the first basic version of our game? Now the first one is resource cards. Now these cards are something that you can play one a turn. And you, you build resources as you every turn that you go by. And of course, you know your creatures and spells that you or actions that you play each turn can are going to consume these resources. And of course, the more resources you have, the bigger creatures and actions that you can do. A little more swingier. Uh, we're going to have to find how someone is going to win the game or how the outcome of the game is going to be decided. So if at any time a player has no more life, so they're at zero or less, they just automatically lose. Uh, if both players run out of cards and the game is just going to be considered a draw. Uh, one of the things that we're really going to have to look at is, and probably refactor over and over, is the basic screen layout. I've taken just a a fairly simple layout. We're going to have an info area over here which is going to show basically you know the, the player's health. Uh, when you hover over a card we'll have another pop-up that comes out and shows all the information on that particular card. We have it divided up into his side and your side. This is the play area where the cards will go. Then of course you're also going to need the ability to see the player's hand. So we'll be working quite a bit on this but it's pretty much just going to look like that. So the starter condition. We're just going to have everyone start off at 40 health, uh, 100 card deck, 10 cards in hand. One thing we should note is that you can't have more than five of a card in a deck. So by doing that, it restricts. Well, it restricts what cards they can put in their deck. So they can't just have you know 100 of this one really good card. Uh, simple mechanic, game mechanics, how, the, how it's basically going to work. So we're going to have a player decide randomly who's going to go first. Then the players are going to alternate their turns until a winner is decided. Now if a player ever runs out of cards in his draw pile, then he just can't draw any more cards to the end of the game. He's not going to automatically lose. So how are the turns going to work? For our first initial draft, we're just going to have uh, the person draws a card, and then he has an option of three things and he can do all these things in any order he wishes. He can play a resource, cast some spells, or play some uh, play some creatures. And of course the resource is only allowed to play one a turn. Then when he's decided that he's done with that, he can enter combat. And we'll talk about combat in the next section. Then after combat, if he has more than ten cards in hand, he discards one. Or he'll discard down to ten I should say. The combat phase combat is going to be fairly simple in this game. The active player, when he's ready for combat, will choose what creatures he wants to attack with, and he'll push those forward. Then the defending player does the exact same thing. He decides what creatures he wants to defend with, and he pushes those forward. Now, once both players have decided what's attacking and defending, the attacking player will add up all of the attack power of his creatures, and assign that damage any way he wishes amongst the defending player's creatures. Then the defending player will do the exact same thing. He'll count up all his attack power, then he'll assign all of his damage amongst the attacking player's creatures. Now for each point of damage assigned, you put a counter on that creature, and if the counter ever exceeds that creature's defense, it's just discarded at the end of combat. Now if you assign enough attack to kill all of his creatures and you still have a bit of attack left uh, you can assign that directly to the player. This is how you get their life totals down. And of course if a player ever hits zero they're dead. So we're going to want to look at some of the creature stats. So we're going to need an attack stat which is just basically how much damage he's going to deal in combat. His defense stat which is how much damage he can take before he dies. Uh, the name of the card and the cost. One thing to note that we haven't actually added here, I have it in a more formal written up document, but creatures do not 
instantly heal after each round. The damage on them stays. And uh, I've actually implemented a regeneration in some creatures where at the beginning of each turn you can remove one counter or an X amount of counters depending on what their regeneration level is. But that something we'll go over a little later on. Uh, spell stats are pretty much the exact same as creature stats. So you're going to need a name, a cost, and the effect. So the, basically the way the cost works is that's how much resources it takes to play this particular creature or spell or action. Generally, you know, the, the more resources it costs, the more swingier and powerful it's going to be. Uh, some of the spell effects, uh, they're, they're really going to vary. We're going to pinpoint a lot of those down later on, but just uh, kind of a little short list that we can do is stuff like buff your creatures, kill creatures, draw more cards. Uh, there's a lot of effects that we can implement, but we're just going to try to keep it fairly simple at the beginning. Uh, your resource card stats. Uh, how much resources this card gives before it's depleted. So we can have resources that give so much resource per turn, and after so many turns they just die. Uh, something I would like to look into implementing. It might not work quite work out, but I, I think it could be fun. Uh, when a resource is depleted, it just simply gets put to the discard pile. Other considerations. Now there's a lot of other things you should think about before you actually sit down and start the coding of your game. Uh, these are things you should be doing during the design of your game. Uh, some of those things are the genre of your game exactly. What setting is your game going to take place in? Is it going to be medieval? Is it going to be pure fantasy? Is it going to be a space game? That's something you really should look at. We're going to keep ours fairly simple. Uh, another thing you have to look at is the number of players per game. Are you only going to allow one-on-one? -on -one? Is it going to be, you know, eight players all playing against each other, maybe teams of two. That's something you're really going to have to look at before you start coding, but it, we're really not going to get into a whole lot of that in this this tutorial series. A line of defense, that's actually something that I have in a game that I'm working on. We probably won't be covered in this tutorial series. Uh, we should actually implement a single player mode, which is a tutorial mode where they're the player plays against the computer, and it's just basically to help him teach the mechanics of the game. Once he learns how to play, then he can start playing against other players. Uh, we're going to have tournaments. Our players are going to be able to all get together, you know, 100 players all log in and they all match off against each other, and at the end, one's determined. It's probably something that you're going to want to implement later on. Uh, ante and how players are going to attain more cards. Uh, if you were doing a huge production for the game, you'd probably have some sort of store where they could buy more cards. But uh, for our simple game, we're just going to have uh, you play for anti each game. So the way that works is at the beginning of each game, you flip the top card over, and that's what you're playing for. This will come into play much later in the game when we uh, have pretty much everything else working properly. But it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, so we're going to need a, a ranking system so people can look and see, you know, who are the best players right now? You know, where, where, how do you compare to everyone else out there? So we're going to have to decide how all the code's going to be broken up between the server and the client. Now we're going to keep all of the game logic on the server side. This way here, it cuts down a lot on the cheating and it just keeps the game a lot more secure. On the client side, now the client side is just simply going to be a shell. It basically displays the game state that's running on the server. That's really all we need it for. And it, it's probably the most secure way to do it. So what kind of databases do we need? For such a simple impl implementation of a game, all we're really going to use is a user accounts and a card database. The card database is going to be pretty straightforward. It's just going to be a database of all the cards. Now the user accounts, it's just simply going to be a login name and uh, a password and it's user ranking. That's all we're going to need for our game because it's fairly simple. In our next tutorial, we'll be covering card containers. Now, a player needs to be able to have his draw pile, his player hand, a discard pile, and the play area. What the card containers is going to do is implement a way that we can move cards from one area to the next. So we want to be able to move cards from the draw pile to his hand, to the play area, and back to the discard pile. And that alone will probably cover a whole tutorial in itself, but it'll probably be the first time we actually start writing some code. That'll probably be next week. It'll be out. So I hope this is a little informative of what we're going to be covering and how our 
the general look of the game will be. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.